Okay, guys, I'm here today with Brian Gleek. Huge honor for me. Guys, Brian is the longest student of the great John Danaher. So he, he was, you were probably like one of the very first students of John, right? And went from white to black belt with him. And still with him. Yeah. And still with yeah. John. And, uh, and guys, I have heard a lot of stories about Brian and about he, how great he is teaching and how great is his jiu-jitsu too. I heard that even though you're very small yeah. and very skinny, you kill a lot of people on, on, on the gym. I've, uh, That's what I heard. Yeah, well, I've, I've tried over the years to to survive and then we talked about this before but you know surviving and then thriving yeah, you know yeah. go from survival to thriving and um, yeah. and that's kind of how jiu-jitsu is supposed to be so i was lucky enough to find a good teacher who could show me what to do no that's awesome and guys brian is filming one instructor instructional series called the under pressure which is all about like topics to deal under pressure because he was always the smallest skinny and the this one is all about the ashi can you explain it a little bit more? Sure, yeah. Um, well, you, you know, as uh, everybody knows now, of course, that, uh, that one of the things that John and his his team and his students have been known for uh, are leg locks. And yep. um, when I was coming up as a student uh, in, in the earlier days, I was very lucky because I was part of a part of the process. Uh, the I, laboratory. I, I, yeah, exa exactly, exactly right. It was like a lot of those early years of training with John, um, you know, day in, day out, we were working together. It was like watching uh, someone, you know, in, in a lab. And um, there was a kind of like research and development sense about how how um, how he was approaching his, his work with leg locks. And so over the years, it's, it's just been amazing to uh, be a part of, this the development of how the leg leg lock game has evolved um but it's really it was a very important part of how i learned jujitsu from the beginning i think a lot of people and you know you too probably but like at the in the early phases there just wasn't very much leg locking at all um when we first started doing it it was something that i think a lot of people didn't like to do they thought it wasn't like high level jujitsu or, you know, all of these other things that, that, you know, people used to say. Um, but for me, even from the very, very beginning, because of who he is and who I am, it was a part of how I learned jujitsu from the beginning, from the bottom up. And um, so what I wanted to do was to share some of the strategies that I found to be very useful in attacking the legs and then also kind of using leg control in a way that is not too complicated to be able to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that um, a lot of people are very specific about what they're doing with legs these days, and so people are becoming increasingly specialized. But I think there are a few core principles behind leg locks that anybody can use, and it doesn't matter whether you are not flexible or you are flexible or you're bigger or you're not bigger. Um, you can find a way to make these things work for you. And so that's really the focus of what yeah, we're doing. No, and just in the other video, you were showing me the concepts of how the clamp and the leg entanglements yeah. are exactly the same position. Yes, that's right. And that was that blew my mind. Yeah. You know, like, I was yeah. like, that's incredible. Yeah. But anyways, Brian, can you show some examples of like the... the, the sure, sure, yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things is uh, understanding, I think, where and how um, we enter into the legs because people understand leg locks as being particular submissions or particular ways that people go but there are plenty of different situations that we need to become familiar with where like understanding where our partner is and like how how they're behaving so uh, a good example is if we're working here from a, a butterfly guard and our partner's seated um we used to feel very comfortable kind of just uh, kind of shooting in on the legs, but if you know what leg locks are, of course you're not gonna allow me to come forward and start to attack you. So often what we would do was allow our partner to come and get control over our biceps here, and we would take a tricep grip. And then from here, it was all about shooting through underneath so that we have the ability to bring our hips under our partner and really elevate. We can kind of rock back and start to lift. So the idea is, of course, that now, even though you're much bigger than I am, I'm able to hold you up using my legs, and now I can use the inside position with these arms to misdirect you and start to drop you down into positions where there's not only am I able to attack the legs here, but if you'll notice, your weight is not on me at all. 
Yep. So the issue of pressure is no longer an issue because yeah. you can't come back forward into me. Um, and so this was like a classic kind of, this is a classic example of taking a position where someone was really pressuring into you and using it to your advantage. Now from here, of course, we have attacks to our partner's legs. We have reaping attacks to the inside. Or if we feel like the person is uh, skilled and coming back into us, we have the ability to scoop, control, and maintain a connection with our partner for an attack on the rear side as well. So this is an example of how we can take a situation where you're much stronger than I am, much bigger than I am. And when we're working here, if I try to hit an arm drag or if I try to high stop, it's very difficult. You're going against like, almost like you are, someone yeah. much bigger than you. And, yeah. uh, and in a lot of cases, you're looking to come forward very aggressively here yeah. and steal inside position and body lock. So whenever we can get to a place like this and draw our hips in, we're learning that getting underneath a person makes them much lighter. And now from here, we can choose to attack either leg, whether we choose to attack with heel hooks or we choose to attack with straight ankle locks and moving into positions where we can really finish with some effectiveness. So, um, working from butterfly guard, working from even underneath our partner, one of the things that John became very well known for was uh, the kipping escape and using an alternative method to the knee elbow escape to be able to get out. And so, when you're on top of me here, especially if I feel like I can't hit a standard knee elbow, the kipping escape is a great way of taking the pressure that you feel from the bottom and misdirecting it slightly. So as soon as I can get out to here, it doesn't matter if you're pressuring forward anymore because now we can steal the inside position. And this is another great example of how we can use, uh, kind of manage someone's pressure to start to look to attack the legs. And whether we have toe holds from this position or heel hooks, or in some cases, if we feel like we can't attack with our uh, submissions and you drive this leg flat here into the floor. Now from here, we have opportunities to come through and start to look to uh, off balance our partner. With X guard variations, we can start to look to elevate our partner. Oh, awesome. And as you go to push back into me here, we have the ability to lift. And now from here, we can start to look to wrap our partner's legs. Oh, man, that's incredible. And that use this incredible. to start to come up. So we have a lot of different ways of entering into um, the legs, and, and again, like as, as we've been talking about, it's mm, the way that I learned leg locks was really around preventing bigger people from putting a lot of pressure. And you going underneath the end yes. and setting up leg entangles. And exactly. And so we'll, we'll, we'll go through a lot of um, different sub, like finishes, but more important, I think, is the idea that I'd like, I think that I'd like people to have confidence in not just like attacking the legs, but actually managing very difficult positions with people who are stronger and using the legs as a way of putting someone else under constant threat of attack. Okay. And um, this is something else that John really drilled into us over the years, but it's hard for someone to hold their leg, like to, to hide their legs from you. Yeah. You know, like no matter how you're, whether you're on your knees or Bernardo, if you stand up here, this is even worse. Like as soon as you start to stand up, now we have access to the legs. Yeah. When you go to drop a knee down, it's very difficult for you to hide your legs. If you go yeah. to put two knees down, it's still very difficult for you to yeah. hide them. So, you know, this was um, once, just like kind of with the clamp when we talked about this before, if you can find a way to put somebody under the threat oh, of attack, yeah. Yeah. It changes how they relate well, to you the, in your training. The, the time, the way I find someone really knows what they're they're talking about mm. is when they start talking about all the ifs. You know, like, as you mentioned here, if you're standing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you drop your knee, if your knee is on the ground, that's like, okay, that, he, he knows every single, right. because for example, on the positions that I'm good at, like half square, over under, you can ask me, any if situation mm -hmm. right. and I have an answer like boom, boom, right. boom, boom, boom. Right. So I can see that you built the same thing with the it's, flag exactly. entanglers and that. Yeah. And uh, Brian, we showed that in the other video as well, mm. but it was so cool to see. Mm. Can you show everybody here again in this mm. video how the leg entanglements and the clamp, oh, which yes. is what you're showing in the other video. Yes, yes. It's exactly the same position. It's, it's exactly the same. That, that yeah. was like, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, so so in the previous video, we were talking about using the, the clamp. And if 
if you um, if you understand the, the clamp, you know that the clamp configuration is a way of managing this distance where we're very close to each other. So uh, a lot of times it starts out in a situation where like you're chest to chest with me here, exactly, and you've got like an underhook here and you have the cross face and I move my body out into a position that looks like this. And if you look at the configuration, we have a knee in front of the shoulder that stops forward pressure. We have a leg over the back that when we join our heel and our knee, we have a closed circuit and we have the ability to provide pressure behind our partner's shoulder. So actually, Bernardo, if you go to pull away from me in this direction, it's very difficult. Yes. If you go to take your head up, it's very difficult yes. to escape. If you go to drive forward, you can't. So we have a lot of control here. When we look at how Ashigurami looks, we see that it, it looks almost identical. And if you offer me this leg, please. Once we're here, we have exactly the same sort of configuration. We have a knee in front of our partner's hip. We have a knee behind our partner's leg. And as you go to advance forward into That's me, amazing. you yeah. can, as you go to drive, turn your body this way. If I don't want I you can. to, it's yeah. very hard. So we have the same kind of directional control here. And the idea is that this is, uh, these two skills are directly related to one another. And I think one of the things that's often missing from people's development as jujitsu practitioners is seeing not just things as being different, a bunch of different situations, but rather but, seeing how they're similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. finding the overlaps between exactly, each other. Exactly, exactly. Oh, um, so we're gonna talk about that a lot in this video, how we can, uh, how understanding one thing will allow us to better understand Clamp, something else. Half butterfly, and, uh, no, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's incredible. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Yeah, so guys, uh, Brian is shooting this uh, series, which is called Under Pressure, and uh, I think he's the perfect example for that, because he's small, he's skinny, and all his life, all he did was dealt with pressure. And uh, this instructional video is all about the Ashigarami, leg entanglements, and etc. And it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy learning with Brian as much as I did. So thank you, thank Brian. Thank you, Bernardo. Awesome. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.